Hello, and welcome to this invitation to sociology. My name is Nigel Ketley, and I'm Senior Lecturer in Education and Social Sciences here at the Institute. What I'd like to do in this session is address the question, what is sociology? And I want to do this by looking at the meaning of the word society and by considering how sociologists have studied society. In 1987, when she was interviewed by a Woman's Own, Margaret Thatcher famously said, there's no such thing as society. There are individual men and women, and there are families, and no government can do anything except through people, and people must look after themselves first. It's our duty to look after ourselves, and then also to look after our neighbors. Now, this quote from Margaret Thatcher seems to deny the very existence of society as a concept. It's also been rejected recently by both David Cameron and Boris Johnson. Thatcher's primary message, of course, was to emphasize individual responsibility, self-help, rolling back the state, which were fundamental elements of Thatcherism. Now, my work as a sociologist actually focuses both on individual experience and patterns of behavior in society as a means to improve the social world. Of course, I wouldn't accept that society doesn't exist. Rather, what I would do is actually see society as emerging from human relationships. Society does exist, and it emerges from what we do on an everyday basis. If we try and give a recent example of this, we can think about the lockdown and social distancing restrictions that were introduced by the government on the 23rd of March. Most of us have adhered to those restrictions and our patterns of behavior have changed quite substantially. That's not just a question of obeying the law. It's a question of expressing shared values and beliefs. If we think about clapping for carers, for example, each Thursday evening, many of us have been out on our doorsteps with our neighbors, um, clapping in support of NHS workers and other key workers. For me, this act is really important because it indicates people do express collective sentiments and opinions. Society does exist through shared values, informal rules, and these values and rules guide group behavior. If we take this discussion one step further, we can see through clapping for carers that we can study it in a variety of ways. We can think about the extent of participation in the clapping, the number of people across the country engaged in the activity. Or we can also think about the motivations of people for clapping for carers. What does it mean? What motives are they expressing? Is clapping for carers about simply expressing solidarity with our neighbors? Is it about saying, showing gratitude to NHS workers? Is it broader support for social distancing and lockdown measures? When we actually think about society as existing and expressed through shared values, unlike the natural sciences, therefore, it requires a method of study which is both numerical, focusing on patterns of behavior, and also one which is narrative, using, for example, interviews to find out what motivates individual behavior. Why are people clapping for carers? What motivates them to do what they do? So combining a narrative and a numerical approach, sociology is both a humanistic and a social scientific discipline, which requires a mixture of methods. In my own research, for example, I've used mixed methods research strategies to study patterns of attainment by gender and class, and also to study patterns of participation in higher education. 
Specifically, I want to understand the extent of inequality, and I want to understand what motivates people's behavior in those contexts as a means to try and help me change society. For example, to improve the educational attainment of some students. Now, if like me, you're interested in what makes society work, you might consider joining one of our courses, such as the Certificate in Sociology or Certificate in Politics, which we'll offer at the Institute from 2021.